I'm Gonna Be. Welcome to part one of my three-part vlog series about the history of the compact disc. Today, I'm going to be going over the basic timeline of the CD and my personal connection to the CD. I find the CD fascinating because it was a technology that was everywhere in my early childhood, and now they're basically obsolete. You can still find them, obviously, but I don't have any devices that can read them. When I was first researching the CD, I knew that they were invented before I was born in 1999, but I only associated them with the 2000s. CDs were a big part of my early childhood. I had a home CD player, a portable CD player, and there was a CD slot in the house computer too. I listened to Love Don't Cost a Thing for the first time by JLo on CD. I listened to Orinoco Flow on CD. And I listened to the Hannah Montana 2 Meet Miley Cyrus album on CD. Very iconic moments. It turns out the compact disc was invented in 1979 and became widely available to the public in 1982. One of my favorite movies as a kid was The Wedding Singer, which was set in 1985. I distinctly remember this scene where Julia, the love interest of the film, was gawking over the CD player her rich asshole boyfriend bought her. She said something along the lines of, let's put on a record, and Glenn rudely shot back with, no you can't honey, it's a CD player, it plays CDs. In a May 1985 issue of Spin, featuring the perks of the compact disc, CD players were listed at around $200 to $1,200. The perks of the CD were higher and clearer sound quality without any distortion like pops or clicks. The normal wear from playing a record was eliminated by the fact the CD is red by laser. And most importantly, the disc can hold an entire 74 minutes of information. When I read, you can listen to an entire album on one disc. I had to laugh as someone who owns a device that can access me the entire world of music. Compared to the record though, the compact disc was really a thing of wonder. A record at that time only held about 20 minutes of music per side, so being able to store more than double the music in one disc must have been absolutely revolutionary. Although the CD was publicly released in the early 80s, compact disc sales didn't overtake cassette tape sales until about the mid-90s. Sales of the compact disc peaked at 942.5 million units in 1999, but digital sales overtook CD sales in the mid-2000s. To me, the CD is the object that represents the transition between the analog and the digital era. The reign of the CD was short-lived but grand. Online music streaming already existed in the early 2000s, and the music industry was in serious trouble by around 2005. Personally, I had completely dropped the CD from my life when I started middle school. I had a fourth generation iPod, no CD slot on my laptop, and my older cousin showed me how to download songs for free off of YouTube anyway. Sales of the CD halved between 2000 and 2007. The rise of streaming killed the CD and it devastated the music industry. But I will get into that in the next video, where I'll be talking about the music industry in the 90s and 2000s and how the CD impacted it. Thank you so much for listening to me talk about the history of the CD for a couple of minutes. I hope you have a good day and I'll see you next time.